I'd actually like to start by just asking you all a question. How many of you have tried to learn a new language before, with a show of hands? Outstanding, that's most of you. How many of you have succeeded? And down go the hands for the most part. I know the feeling. Well, whether you've succeeded in learning a new language or you're still trying, you are not alone. Okay, there are about 1.2 billion people learning a new language around the world. Now, the vast majority of them are actually learning just one language in particular, a language spoken by everyone in this room. That's right, about 800 million people are learning English. And many of them are doing it to get out of poverty. The reason for this is simple. In most countries, you can earn between 25 and 100% more just by knowing English. But what about the other 400 million people? Why are they learning a new language? Well, I ask these questions because I am part of a team that is trying to make language education free for everyone in the world. It's called Duolingo, and we have more than 300 million people using it to learn a new language for free. Now, that means that we have one of the largest data sets of language learners in existence. And we've studied millions of people spanning every single country on the planet. Our researchers created this map, and it shows us the most popular languages to learn in each country around the world. And it tells us a lot of interesting things. For example, we can see just how popular it is to learn English. Most of the world is learning English. Now, this is something that we expected. But then we noticed something unexpected, something strange. And if I zoom in here, you'll be able to see it too. The data told us that the most popular language to learn in the country of Sweden is Swedish. Sounds like a mistake, doesn't it? Can't be that hard to learn, can it? So why was this? Why was the most popular language to learn in Sweden Swedish? Refugees. Sweden saw more than a 10x increase in the number of refugees seeking asylum there between 2015 and 2016. And as they arrived, they all began looking for a way to learn Swedish for free. But where did all of these refugees come from? Well, many of them actually came from Syria. As a matter of fact, there are now more registered Syrian refugees than the entire population of Los Angeles. There are more than six million registered Syrian refugees and counting. Now, this is shocking, of course, but it's really not the first time that we've heard something like this. I'll give you an example. The UN came out with a study not too long ago that showed that more people have access to cell phones than toilets. That says something about our priorities, doesn't it? When I first heard about this, I wasn't sure whether to be impressed or ashamed. But then I was reminded that over the years, we've actually received thousands of letters and emails from people who are using technology, cell phones, to get themselves out of difficult situations. Here's one of them, I'll read it to you. Learning German was a necessity for me to advance in my career and broaden my options beyond Syria. Living in a country torn by hideous war and daily terrible news can be unbearable, but Duolingo always found its ways to lift up my spirit. And we've received really thousands of letters just like this one. And when we discovered what was happening in Sweden, we decided that simply replying to these letters and publishing our research was not enough. So we decided to go further, much further actually, about 6,000 miles further, to be exact. Uh, we traveled from the United States to the Middle East to find and meet the people that had been writing to us. So our journey begins here in Gaziantep, which is just over the border from Syria. Some photos of the journey.
Now, the first person to let us into his home and into his life is a man named Ale. Now, he actually protested against the Syrian government when things started to turn bad there. And he was arrested during one of these protests and carried off to jail. But as he explained to us, this was no ordinary jail. Now, he said that he was placed in a small cell with 50 other men, so small and so crowded that they had to sit balled up with their knees to their chests, unable to stand up and unable to speak for one whole year. He said that he did not see the sky for one year. Now, after he was released, he fled to Turkey, which is where his story takes more of a positive turn, thankfully. He taught himself how to speak Turkish, using mostly free resources like ours. And he's now become a school teacher, teaching Arabic language and computer programming to the kids in Turkey. And he's doing much better, as you can see there. So next up is a remarkable lady named Noor. Originally from Iraq, she fled after a car bomb exploded on her street, shattering the windows to her house and sending bullets flying in all directions. She told us a story of fleeing with her family in the car while her home became a literal war zone. She too fled to Turkey, and she also taught herself how to speak Turkish, using mostly free resources. She now speaks five languages and has become a successful software engineer. Her name actually has a meaning. It simply means delight, which I think is quite appropriate. So I have just one more story for you today, and it comes from the final stop on our journey. We were granted last minute permission to enter this place. This is Azraq refugee camp in Jordan, and it is one of the largest refugee camps in the world. Azraq refugee camp has a population of 37,000 refugees. And out of 37,000 refugees, 60% of them are children. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, this is a very difficult place to gain access to. And even once we were inside, they were very hesitant about how much they were willing to show us. You see, they didn't really understand why we had come there. And after a little while, we found out why they were so concerned about us being there. See, it turns out that the camp actually uses Duolingo to teach their refugees English. This is excellent, so why would they be worried about us being there, of all people? Well, it turns out that they were worried that we might have come to sue them for copyright infringement because they were putting our logo on the certificates that they give to the refugees. They were very relieved when we told them that this was not why we had come there and that they could keep doing that. They showed us around and they introduced us to this young man. This is Mahmoud, and Mahmoud is 15 years old. And he has been at Azraq refugee camp since he was a child. When his family fled Syria, they had to move between more than 30 different towns before they arrived at this refugee camp. 30 different times before they found somewhere safe. Now, we were introduced to Mahmoud because he is just completely obsessed with learning. He's obsessed with his education. And we asked him what he would say if he could send a message to everyone in the United States. Which is a risky question, to be honest. It's a risky question to ask anybody. But he did a great job. He said this. He said, I want them to know about me that I never gave up with the war circumstances that we are in. He said, I love to learn so that life would continue. That's how he thinks about his education. Now, we met many countless people 
on our journey and as they led us into their homes and their lives. Slowly but surely, those charts became faces and the data points became people. And they all seemed to have just one thing in common. They were not learning a new language to earn 25% more or to get a better job. Now, they were learning a new language to survive. Because for them, learning a new language represented a chance at a new life. It was a chance for them to find home again. So all of this left us with just one final question. What do we do about all of this? What do we do with everything that we've learned? Well, we decided to turn the footage from our journey into a documentary for the whole world to see. The documentary is called Something Like Home, and we released it for free on World Refugee Day 2018. It's since been watched by more than one million people around the world, and it promotes the United Nations Refugee Council petition. This is a petition that asks the governments of the world to make sure that all of the refugees in their country get access to a free education. So as we go forward, we're building our product not just for the 300 million users that we're proud to serve, but for all 1.2 billion people learning a new language around the world and for all of the reasons that they're doing it. Because we think we can make a positive impact in their lives. And the same thing goes for you. Because in today's highly connected world, your work is going to have an impact far beyond what you could ever imagine. And while you won't always get to decide who gets impacted by your work, you do get to decide how they are impacted by your work and what work you choose to do as a result. Because for all you know, their very future could be in your hands. Thank you very much. Cheers. I'm lighting on my feet. And that's what they don't see. Thank you, Jack, for that wonderful presentation.